okay, I feel this way, they feel this way. It's just who they are. So I accept that, right? Exactly to your point. No expectations, no disappointment. A lot of uh, people's actions are a result of their outcomes and things that have happened in their lives. This is all based on circumstances and their reactions and the way that they communicate is based on this idea that they've gone through these sometimes life-changing events that have shaped and molded them to who they are today. It's so much easier to accept all they come with. I understand that you feel this way. I don't agree with it, but I get it. You're entitled to your feelings and thoughts and opinions. Because more often than not, one person is giving way more than the other. And then the more you give, the less you're gonna have. And at one point, you're not even gonna have rope to be able to pull. Good, everybody welcome back to the Dima podcast it's Neela and it is Adis what's up family what's up is accepting people for who they are okay lately <laughs> lately and here's the thing like also accept me for how who I am I have a very good sense of awareness of the type of person that I am I would say right I think that I am someone who more so is too more focused on how I am perceived so that being said I'm very cautious of how I act right it's not a fake act but I am someone that Wears who I am on my sleeves, if that makes sense, unapologetically, right? And um, lately, because I'm so hyper aware of that, I'm able to remove my emotions from situations and look at people for who they are too. When I do that, it helps me analyze conversations better. It helps me understand where people are coming from better, why they say the things they say, you know, why they do the things they do. Not that I'm trying to think for them or speak for them, but if you know someone really well and you know their behaviors and you know their habits, right? You're able to start to understand, you're able to understand kind of why situations or conversations may go left or why you don't see eye to eye or why you argue right sometimes it just takes taking a step back and understanding who they are as a person accepting that this is just them I can't win this battle I can't win this fight this is just them this is who I am maybe that's why we're not kind of moving forward or getting anywhere maybe accepting who they are and settling with just that and giving what you can to that version of who they are because that's all they that they'll understand too does that make sense yeah once you understand that sometimes it's just with their, how the character is right it sets you up for not being disappointed you know what i mean it, you can't be disappointed in someone if you know that this is just how they work and how they operate you know what i mean but i think for the longest time it's hard to accept that because in a lot of situations you feel like you're right right and they feel like they're right right so when there's a disagreement you go nowhere because of the way you guys are even if you can't get your point across if you can't win the battle it helps shed light to your understanding of the situation on your end because you're able to process the fact that, okay, I feel this way, they feel this way, it's just who they are. So I accept that, right? Exactly to your point. No expectations, no disappointment, right? And that goes on the other end of it as well. You have to also stay true to who you are so that if you are in an argument and some, you're maybe not agreeing with someone, you're expressing the fact that it's just who you are. And hopefully they can see that too and accept it. So it goes both ways. I've came recently more than ever across situations, um, you know, even with adults, like parents, um, who have been very one-sided about something it, it is essentially who they are right and will attack me for maybe not feeling the same and I could sit there and argue back I could sit there and attack back I could sit there and pull facts give my point of view but you have to have an understanding of okay who is this person is this what they believe is this all they know is this what they stand on if they stand on that business that's fine but is it worth your peace to try to change that and change who they are, right? Or are you willing to just accept it for what it is and move forward and still be cordial and neutral, but like just not try to give it more than just what it is, just that, because that's just who they are, right? I am there in my life now, very much so with every situation. I am very much on standing on what I believe, my peace, and then accepting people for who they are so that I can just keep conflict and complications out of my own life, right? Set myself up for success rather than expecting from people that 
aren't the same. A lot of uh, people's actions are a result of their outcomes and the things that have happened in their lives. So it's actually really simple when you think about it. This person thinks the way they think because they went through X, Y, and Z. I think the way I think because I went through X, Y, and Z, whether it's upbringing, whether it's um, catastrophic events, you know, that happened in their lives or, you know, trauma or anything. All of those things shape them, right? Just like a baby coming into this world, there's all of these events that shape their lives into who they are when they're in their 20s, 30s, 40s. So once you realize that, that this is all based on circumstances and their reactions and the way that they communicate is based on this idea that they've gone through these sometimes life-changing events that have shaped and molded them to who they are today, it's so much easier to accept all they come with. I totally agree with you because nine times out of 10, people are a product of their environment. And if you're aware of their environment, it'll help also bring ease to accepting for them for who they are. But here's the thing, what I struggled with for so long dealing with adults is like, Yes, you should know better, though, because you come to an age where you can think for yourself, have some sort of understanding and ground of, like, humanity to an extent, right? People, feelings, emotions, others. So why are you still acting this way? Why are you using your upbringing as an excuse? Why are you choosing to be this way at this point? So I have a bat again, I've, I've had a battle in which trying to change people because my expectation of them is like, well, you should know better. You should know better. Just because you went through that doesn't mean that now you should know better. But again, people will choose their environments. They'll choose their habits, their behaviors. That being said, don't expect anything from anyone. I also think that some people don't even realize what's happening. They're just acting based on just the way their brains are have been hardwired over the years, right? And the problem of all of this is when you deal with the extreme side of things, right? When you deal with people that are purposely the way they are because they just don't give a That's what confuses everything because you're just like, bro, are you just communicating with me this way because you can? Or do you realize like what's happening, right? And then like when you realize that there are some people who are just purposefully, they don't care and they, they will want to assert that sort of way of thinking on you just because they can, and then you deal with the people that just don't really understand that they're lashing out in this way or reacting in this way. That's why it's hard to deal with these, right? Because you have on one hand, somebody that's subconsciously doing this where they've just been hardwired this way and it's resulting in this. And you have the people who just don't care and would rather make you miserable and then to reason with you and understand that, okay, we should come to an agreement here. That's what confuses me the most. Like, are you the type of person that genuinely wants peace or are you the type of, and you but you don't know it right because your brain is just reacting this way based on your trauma your understanding as a kid etc or are you just someone who is just super filled with like their own pride sense of ego that you don't care i was just gonna say the biggest like denominator in that situation with those people who are aware consciously consciously and do it is pride pride is and you know what i recently realized too I have no problem putting my pride aside. I say this openly. I have reached out to exes when they've done me wrong. I've reached out to, I mean, you know, I have no problem leading a situation, even if I'm hurt. I, in the beginning, yes, when I'm emotional, but when those emotions come down, because if I love and care about you, I'll reach out. I will always look at you for the impact you've had on my life to some degree, rather than how I left things with you at the end, right? Because for me, at least with my life, I've no matter whether you did me wrong or not, I, you, you played a role in my life to some degree at some point. So I'll always cherish a moment of that. But that being said, a lot of people will let pride destroy them. And the problem with pride is in that moment, it may make sense because emotions are high, right? But long term effects are really, really bad. You'll burn bridges. You know, you'll you'll ruin relationships. You'll lose situations. It'll come at a cost, right? And I think that's why growing up, I didn't understand what it meant to not be so prideful. But now at an older age where my relationships are the most important things in my life, right? What I cherish and think about most, I have no problem putting my pride aside. I am honest about it. And I think it gives people, you know, I, I praise people more. I think it takes more strength to put the pride aside versus hold on to that. 
and a lot of people who aren't aware of themselves or you know accepting the people for who they are are the people who have that issue with pride ego uh, wanting to be right refusing to understand the other side of things you don't have to agree but at least understand you know like where you're coming from so that's where you, you hit that 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 area of just like give and take you know we talked about that when you conquer your pride and you're not somebody that's like filled with ego and your way or the highway it's so easy for you to be non-reactive in situations and we talked about that before and the importance of being non-reactive because you can see th things clearly right when that moment passes some people can do irreparable damage in the moment right when they're arguing with someone where they don't see eye to eye with a certain situation and this person thinks they're right and this person thinks they're right and then something is said right or there's an attack or something like that that happens that can cause so much more damage than realizing okay i think i'm right in this situation you think you're right in this situation we can agree to disagree but i'm not going to be reactive in this situation because i'm understanding that you are looking at this through a different lens than i am and honestly that's okay and i'm going to accept that and we can go about this in a way where now you know um we can work with something here rather than saying something in the moment right because you're filled with rage or anger animosity because they don't understand you and they're taking this in a whole different way than you are and you can work from there you know what i mean the hardest part i feel like with accepting people for who they are is when it's someone that you love and care about deeply and you want them to know better you want them to understand. You want them to care. You want them to feel you, right? Like, understand where I'm coming from. It's so hard in those cases to just be like, all right, I accept you for who you are. You're a person, but I love you. Because, dude, like, I literally love you. Can you love me back? Can you care some more? Can you show me that same empathy I'm giving you, right? Those types of people that you have to accept them for who they are, usually the people who are, honestly, in my opinion, like, more hard-headed, you know, selfish a little bit to some degree, um, less aware of others, less empathetic, good people, but like just not as hyper focused on the feelings of others, the surroundings, um, just aware of, you know, everything else around that's going on. And I think that again, sometimes it's not done intentionally, you're right. But also, if somebody knows you enough to know what bothers you, to know how you are, how you move, what your habits are, and they're still choosing to make you accept them for who they are, that's not right. That's not right. No, 100%, bro. You're pointing at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not right. <laughs> I'm literally it's not kidding. Right. But, bro, but that's, do you feel me? I 100% feel you, bro. And I, I feel the, the main thing also in that is the empathy part. The, re the, the soul, the common denominator, like you said before, in this conversation is also empathy, right? Because you're saying that it's okay for you to make me feel this way. I'm going to accept you for who you are because I care about you. And I think that's what they're missing on their end, too. Because it's like, if you are able to empathize with me, right, you're able to understand that I love you and I want you to love me the same way. So let's work something out here where we both understand each other. And sometimes it's okay to agree to disagree. Most times that's Most okay. Most times. M more than ever, it's, re it's necessary because you're not going to always agree with people. How boring. Yeah. How boring, yeah. right? But you have to come to a ground of at least understanding. I understand that you feel this way. I don't agree with it, but I get it. You're entitled to your feelings and thoughts and opinions. And I think that's healthy in a relationship sometimes. It's important to have disagreements, but clean verbiage within that, right? No attacking for feeling something different or not agreeing, right? It's important to have that type of healthy chain of communication. So I think in general, yeah, it, and I also think it also, and it's funny how we always come back to this, but we'll accept people for who they are and every now and then, but yeah, you will eventually get to a place where you don't accept them. <laughs> <laughs> that happens, dude. Yeah. It happens. I feel you. And I sometimes you're checked out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, burnout. You don't want to get to a place of burnout because that's even harder. Then but, you can't see straight. Yeah, but I hope that that person on the, on the other end of the, the situation, the burnout that mm -hmm. it's causing, understands that look like something has got to give, you know, somebody or something in the situation. And hopefully it's both of us. Yeah. Right? Because more often than not, one person is giving way more than the other. And then the more you give, the less you're going to have. And at one point, you're not even going to have rope to be able to pull. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's always take, 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 never any give. Insane, yeah. Niels. Where can they find us? YouTube.com slash the Dima podcast. TDP. We out. We out.